Hey everyone, uh, I just thought I'd do another quick homebrew how-to on uh, how to do a DIY glycol chiller. I know there's some plans out there on the internet, but I haven't seen anybody do a build on YouTube yet. Maybe I'm wrong. But, uh, so I thought I'd just show mine. I'm redoing mine right now. And so I thought I would just show it's pretty simple uh, to do this. And it can save you like a thousand dollars on a chiller and on a so basically what I have here is just a home uh, window unit, like a small air conditioner unit. And I got this at Home Depot and I think I paid like $125 for it on sale. Um, but the only thing that's kind of important here is that it's an analog unit. It's got the old dials and not a digital unit because the digital units are a little harder to work with as far as uh, bypassing the temperature control. So all you do with these, sorry about the mess out here. All you do with these is you take the casing off of the air conditioner and then you pull the, where is it? The temperature sensor, it'll be up here. And you, or no, I'm sorry, it's on the condenser. You pull it off and leave it there so that it can't make the AC turn off. Um, and then you take the evaporator coil, which is under here. Um, I wrapped it because it does uh, have some water drip off of it, but take that evaporator coil and just carefully like straighten it out, unbend it, however you want to say that. And I ran it into a cooler. <laughs> and obviously inside my cooler, you can see my glycol pumps, but I've also got a recirculation pump in there. Uh, that helps just kind of move it around in the cooler so that it stays cold all around. But you can see the evaporator is just in the glycol. Um, yeah, this isn't pretty at all, <laughs> but it works great. I'm able to keep all of these fermenters and bright tank at whatever temperature I want. I can cold crash, I can keep it at serving temperature for the bright tank. Yeah, and so I can kind of do whatever I want with it. And like I said, this thing kind of outperforms some of the similar units I've used, smaller units. Um, I've used, uh, I won't say names, but I've used a couple of them that cost about a thousand bucks. And those are limited usually to two to three vessels at a time. And like I said, I can do, I've had all six of my fermenters going on here at once with no issue. And I've been able to, I've crashed five at a time. I haven't done six at a time yet, but um so yeah and this cost me like 135 dollars to build i had the coolers so that's an expense i didn't have to make but um i think the wood was like 10 bucks <laughs> and i had some casters sitting around and i bought the ac new i didn't even buy a used one but you could probably get a used one off craigslist or marketplace for cheap so way to save money in your home brewery i know it's kind of an ugly franken chiller you know um, I'm going to enclose it in a much nicer box and it'll be black and at least it'll match my gear. But hey, it's about chilling your beer and not about what it looks like. So figure if I can save. All right, so I have the finished product here. It's been a little while since I started it, but I just enclosed the whole chiller and cooler. The con air conditioner is here and the cooler is back here. <laughs> uh, and these are just some wood uh, panels that I got from Home Depot. They're for the tool carts. So I made everything match. Um, but yeah, so the chiller's all enclosed. It's also my fermenter stand. So it doesn't, you know, take up any unnecessary room. And I think it looks pretty good. Uh, all of the stuff is just mounted. It's kind of hard to see because of the brewing setup. Let's see here. It's all just mounted on the side on pegboard. And I've got an inkboard controller on there. It's not on right now because I'm not using it. Uh, that's another story. But anyways, uh, yeah, so not a bad DIY chiller. Like I said, saved me about a thousand bucks. So cheers. <laughs>